Matthew 18 is packed with a lot of great punch. It starts with an interesting conversation between the disciples and Jesus. It says, the disciples came to Jesus and they said, hey, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus calls this little child and brings him before them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. And so he's teaching about the nature of the kingdom of heaven, that it's upside down. It's different than the way we think about things on earth. You know, the disciples are sort of jockeying for position, and that's just kind of how it works, right? But Jesus says, no, you really need to be like a child. Now, Jesus isn't saying that you need to be naive um, or simple-minded to come to God. What he's saying is you just need to be dependent. You know, the, the basic nature of children is that they're dependent. You know, they're needy. They need help. And Jesus was saying, if you, if you try to be the man, like the Pharisees and Sadducees were trying to be the men, he said, it's just not going to work. You have to humble yourself and you have to recognize your need if you're going to be in the kingdom of heaven. And then as we scroll down a little bit further, Jesus tells this parable of the lost sheep. He says, if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others on the hills and go out to search for the one that is lost? And again, he's talking about just the nature of good leaders and, and really the nature of the value of humans, every individual person, no matter their uh, perceived value in the world. In the kingdom of God, everyone is valuable because everyone is made in the image of God. And Jesus is saying that this is just, this is the value and dignity of every individual and that the, the Father's will is to go after everybody, everyone who would believe. And then he gets into the next section here, which is a really insightful, he talks about correcting another believer. This is great relationship advice. It says in verse 15, if another believer sins against you, go privately and point out that offense. And if the other person listens and confesses it, then you've won that person back. In other words, he's saying, don't, don't, if something, if someone sins against you, don't go to other people and spread gossip about it and, and, uh, and complain about it to other people. Re relationally, the way that God wants us to deal with that is to go to the person involved, and this is a lot of times hard for people to do, and to look them in the eye and to give them a chance to be made right with you. And if, and if it works, great, you've won that person over. And if it doesn't work, he says, take one or two others with you and go back. And I'll, I'll put a link below for more on this particular passage. But the point is, God cares about relationships, and he wants us to have healthy relationships with, with one another. And when we have healthy relationships amongst each other, then we have a healthy relationship with God. Now, as we scroll down a little bit further, he talks about uh, unforgiveness. And again, this is a relational thing. Peter came to him and he said, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? And Jesus said, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Again, what brilliant relationship advice. Even, even right on the heels of, you know, talking about how to handle it when somebody sins against you, how to be the bigger person and to deal with it in a mature, godly way. And now he says, well, listen, but even so, when people sin against you, you should have that forgiving heart. Don't store up bitterness in your heart, but you should forgive them 70 times 7. He wasn't talking about a specific number. He was just, the principle here is you should always be forgiving. Always have a forgiving heart. Um, and that will free you up uh, more than anything else from the bitterness that comes from harboring that resentment in your own heart. So as you scroll a little bit further down, you can read the rest of this on your own. But you're ready now for Matthew 18. Again, it's just full of great insights from Jesus. And we'll see you tomorrow for chapter 19.